It's now been over a month, a month and maybe a week or so, that the riots in many places just haven't stopped. I gotta admit, I'm not enthused to even be talking about it. Riot declared in Portland cops order protesters to leave or face arrest. I don't think this is a riot or a protest. It's something else, and I don't know what you'd call it. It's not like the violence is enough to be overtly civil war. But you, can look at the, you gotta look at some of these photos, man. According to Andy Noe, he says the U.S. military was brought in to deal with the ongoing unrest uh, and make some arrests. I don't know uh, for sure exactly what's going on or why, but in Seattle and Portland last night, you just had, I don't know, insurrection. I don't know what you call it, a separatist movement. If you have a bunch of revolutionaries that are using militant tactics, driving around in unmarked vehicles loaded with weapons and resupplying far left extremists to attack police and try and destroy government buildings. It's not a protest or a riot. You know what I mean? I, I, you could theoretically call it, it. It could technically fall in those camps, but it's something else. And it's just not stopping. I don't know how <laughs> or, or uh, what needs to be done to actually stop it. But these, these, these extremists are just going to keep doing it. We're going to keep hearing about it. And here's the latest news. So uh, the, the, the quick gist in Portland, riot was declared in Seattle. They tried reestablishing the Chaz. Ten arrests were made. And this is where we're at so far. Unsurprisingly, it is in the Pacific Northwest where we imagine this would be happening. But I got I got to tell you, man, I can't show you some of these videos, but I can show you some stills. It looks like war zones. I mean, it, it looks like areas that have that I've seen that have become, you know, just it's, it looks like. It looks like some kind of civil war territory. You've got buildings. The, the ground is riddled with graffiti. The walls, people are, th these Antifa people are using tactics specifically designed not to cross a certain threshold. They want to make sure that their attacks are sustained but blunted so that you can't outright declare it to be an act of, you know, legitimate insurgency. They want the media to say it's a protest. Look at this. Even Fox says riot declared in Portland. Cops order protesters to leave or face arrest. They're not protesters, man. They're, they're, they're using unmarked vehicles to deliver explosives to their comrades who are then lobbing them at cops and, and U.S. military. That's something else. Something else entirely. I, I can't, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I, I guess people in media, even Fox News, are reluctant to actually call this something more extreme because nobody wants to believe it. You know, I remember reading a story about the first civil war, right? The actual United States Civil War. That it broke out at Fort Sumner. Union forces were there, and I think it was South Carolina. South Carolina said, yo, bug off. They said no. Fighting broke out. But the story I heard, and it could be apocryphal, maybe it's wrong, was that people had gathered on a hillside watching and having picnics because they really didn't believe it would ever happen. And then while they're sitting there enjoying their tea and crumpets, fighting broke out. People died and they were horrified. Now, that's just a story I heard. So again, you can just Google it probably and see if it's true or not. But I feel like we're dealing with something similar right now. Maybe it will never reach wide scale, you know, like widespread levels in uh, Seattle and Portland. We kind of shrug because we're like, we get it. They're bad. But this is this, this is part of the tactic used by the far left extremists. They know that if they come out right now and declare independence, or if they come out right now and declare insurrection or call the United States government illegitimate in a grand speech and then declare an, a formal statement of you know, war or conflict, they'll be crushed in two seconds. So long as the media keeps calling them protesters and they just say, we're just peacefully protesting and then use military tactics, militant tactics, well, then no one's ever, they're, they're not going to be shut down. Donald Trump is going to be deploying Federal Protective Services as well as a special DHS unit on the 4th of July tomorrow to protect statues and monuments. But and, and, and they're going, my understanding is, to Seattle, Portland and D.C. So there's a real potential for chaos. The media, of course, is still defending these people. And I don't know why. I, I really, really don't. They're so I don't know, man. I feel like there there are a lot of people that are on the Trump train, right? They just whatever Trump says, they're right there. And then the media has the inverse of that. No matter what Trump says, they're on the other train and the other track. And most people are sitting in the middle saying, what's happening? And that includes a lot of people who have voted for Trump, a lot of people who didn't. And 
I, I feel like I'm sitting here watching, you know, Donald Trump is going to deploy these federal protective services. The far left is engaging in overt acts of insurrection and insurgency, and they're trying to mask it. And you have these people on the, so, so here's what I'm trying to say. The people on the right, the Trump trained people and people who would like not necessarily every hardcore Trump supporter are in agreement that something crazy is happening with the far left. But because the far, the, 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 the media people hate Trump so much, everything he says, everything Fox says must be a lie. It must not be true. So certainly this is fake news. Fox News says a riot was declared. I don't believe it. There's a, a tweet coming out from Andrew uh, Kaczynski of CNN that I see journalists sharing. It's a screen grab of a Fox News article saying, from June 2nd saying uh, Antifa arrests are coming as rioters prepare to, to head to the suburbs, government source says. And he said something like, oh, I guess we're still waiting on this one. And I was like, what do, you, what do you mean we're still waiting on this one? I live in the suburbs. The helicopters were near my house. I mean, I can't speak for every single suburb everywhere, but at least outside of major cities. Yeah. And I heard I heard similar things were happening in Chicago and people were freaking out. I have family there and they said people showed up and they they rioted. So, OK, the riots happened. What about Antifa arrests? Yeah, they just announced the other day they arrested a ton of people and we've got videos of arrests. But people that this this K file dude over at CNN is like, I guess we're still waiting on this one because it hasn't happened yet. Do you have Google? Did you just look it up? It's, it's happening. I'm looking at it. What is this? That's the media. And so it's funny because people often say that the media is not going to tell you what's happening. Well, they do. It's an issue of their high profile personalities who refuse to put it into the news cycle. So yes, low level reporters will write up a story and press send. It'll appear on their website. And then the actual high, high level anchors, primetime hosts and high level personalities on the internet won't talk about it and will in fact lie and say it's not happening. That's what's really, really crazy. In fact, I'm willing to bet I could pull up a CNN article where they say Trump makes arrest of, you know, far left protests, whatever. And then just like, just like put that next to uh, K Files tweet. Like, anyway, let's read the news and see what the latest is, because we got they, look, they tried bringing Chaz back. Right. Riot declared in Portland. Cops order protesters to leave or face arrest. They say police described a chaotic scene. They said several protesters were starting fires, throwing rocks at officers, pointing lasers at officers and launching projectiles with slingshots at officers. Now, I don't know if the police actually called them protesters. They say to the individuals within the S Southwest Broadway Avenue, the street is open to vehicular traffic, uh, failure to comply. They said individuals. I guess it's one way to put it. It's non-political. Andy No, the journalist, posted a video of the unrest near the federal courthouse that said that he said showed the U.S. military protecting the building that was under attack. They rushed out and made an arrest here, he posted. Antifa have been trying to set the building on fire for hours. So he said law enforcement in downtown Portland have been under attack for hours at the federal courthouse by Antifa extremists. They hurl projectile weapons at police. And when officers respond, go on social media tagging politicians and lawyers claiming police brutality. This is a fact. I can't speak for these individual moments, but I can tell you definitively one of the principal tactics of far leftists, Antifa, whatever you want to call them, is to, for example, they'll throw a brick at a cop's face and then they'll walk up. And when the cop goes to attack them, then they start filming and they go, help, help, I'm being repressed. And then they try and always stage it out to be like they're peaceful protesters. You need to understand these people. A lot of them are frail, pathetic, weak and stupid. And we make fun of them a lot. But a lot of the organizers are smart and manipulative and are trying to destroy everything. Now, they are also very stupid in terms of what they think comes next. But you got to understand as well, some of them know exactly what they're doing. From the ashes of the old, they will build anew. They know life will get miserable and horrifying for everyone if they succeed. But they will be able to seize power in the chaos. It's, 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 these, are, these people are evil, power-driven, self-interested lunatics. And I've, I've, I've talked to them. I've met them before. They were at Occupy Wall Street. And again, everyone's always like, say their names, Tim. Listen, I don't want them to get attention. I don't want them to be able to go and post blogs and recruit. Some of them don't want their names said for sure, but many people would use the opportunity. So no, you can follow Andy No on Twitter. And he talks about the organizers with their arrests and all that stuff. And you can see who these people are when they get caught. A lot of them, probably people probably don't know their names, but they use very clever strategies. So right now you can see, here's, here's a video. There's a, there's a man and he's sitting down filming and you can see the police moving out with weapons. 
They always, always want to post. See, this is why Andy Noah is a problem. They'll take a, a three minute video where you can see the far left throwing bricks, throwing explosives. They'll cut out those parts. So all you see is someone with their hands up and the cops just like knocking them down and arresting them. And they'll go, look what they're doing. It was peaceful. It was a peaceful protest, man. When in reality, it's a manipulation tactic to get public opinion on their side, which is one of the most annoying things to me about Trump and many people on the right. They don't understand that game. So they'll start posting stupid things that are racist, that are insulting. Trump will insult people. And they don't realize how that is used by Antifa and the far left to gain support. They will pull your statements out of context to make you look bad. So don't give them the ammunition they need. And he said police in the downtown area were under attack for hours. We read that. And Wednesday night, anarchists in the city said, you know, you know what? I'm just so sick of the anarchists. No, they're not anarchists. They're, they're revolutionary communists. They destroyed a statue of an, a 120 year old elk statue. It had been the target before, according to Oregon Live. Portland Police Bureau Chief Chuck Lovell said in a statement, engaging in criminal activity, including vandalism and property damage is not peaceful demonstration. We ask for the public's help in identifying and sharing information. Let me, let me, let me just break things down for you, man. A month, a month and or longer of these people. Look at this. Look at the graffiti. And, and, and you got people. And he says they're U.S. military. Maybe they're National Guard. I'm not entirely sure. Making an arrest. Look at some of this imagery. The, 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 these buildings are under siege. They've been doing this for over a month. At what point do you say this is not a protest? How stupid do you have to be to, to, to make a statement where you're like, damaging and property destruction are not peaceful demonstrations. They're not peacefully demonstrating. They haven't been peacefully demonstrating. Why are you even pretending like that's the case? You point out these people have been placing Portland under siege in a sustained attack to cripple the city for over a month. Are they effective? That I can't tell you. How's the economy doing? That I don't know. It may be that these, these skirmishes aren't particularly effective, but you can see what their goal is. It's a battle of attrition. They want people to be demoralized. They want regular people who live in the city to leave. They want it to crumble. They want to tear it all down. And they know they can feign being the peaceful protesters, putting out propaganda, and then they will, they, they will be ignored by the press, which it's, they are. And that's what's happening. As these people get arrested, all right, as they branch out into the neighborhoods, like we saw in Chicago, the media will just run cover for them because these people are as dumb as they come. Just absolutely, absolutely insanely stupid. Let me see if I have the tweet here. So this is some uh, more chop stuff. Well, let me see. Uh, here we go. Andrew Kaczynski, he said, I guess we're still waiting on this. From June 2nd, Antifa arrests coming. Concerns over riots heading to the to suburbia, government source says. I'm, I'm, I'm confused by this. I saw this. This is this is Andrew Kaczynski of uh, I believe he's of still CNN. Yeah. Reporter at CNN's K file. He's got uh, he's, he's got three hundred twenty six thousand followers. Ben Smith of The New York Times, who I actually think is doing a good job, uh, retweeted this. And I'm sitting here confused. I'm, I'm, I'm actually confused. Uh, the DOJ uh, announced uh, uh, suspects. 15 individuals. They announced charges against four people. They arrested one. The other day arrested another guy who was trying to tear down the Andrew Jackson statue. The arrests have been happening. I mean, not just that. To what context are they talking about Antifa arrests? In Portland, they literally arrested a bunch of people. How about over in Seattle? Update. J July 3rd, 5.30 a.m., shortly after 10 p.m. on Thursday, officers arrested three people outside the West Precinct for property destruction. Beginning at about 1 a.m. on Friday, Officers arrested seven individuals near Broadway and East Pine Street for assault, harassment, and failure to disperse. The arrested individuals were later booked into the King County Jail. Okay, so Antifa has been arrested, not just by the DOJ, but Seattle PD, Portland PD, people in Washington, D.C., and Chicago. The arrests have been happening. But if you want to talk about federal government, if that's the context, they literally arrested people. Now it says concerns over riots heading to suburbia. There was a concern over it heading to suburbia. In Chicago, a leaked phone call between the mayor and several aldermen, which are like uh, neighborhood politicians. You, you, you hear one of these aldermen saying, when you shut the bridges down, you pushed them out into the neighborhoods. So outside of the city area into, so the way, I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with how Chicago works, but you have downtown, which is mostly 
big buildings, many apartments, condos. Once you start moving away from downtown, it slowly starts turning into residential neighborhoods. If you ever uh, have seen Chicago overhead, you could be like downtown Chicago. You can be in the Sears Tower. I won't call it Willis. Uh, the Willis Tower, whatever you want to call it. It's the tallest building in Chicago. And you can look out and you'll see after only a few miles, it's all grids of identical looking houses. It, it really is quite boring if you ask me. There's actually several neighborhoods like the neighborhood I grew up in where they use the same framework for building every single house because a company will come in and say, here's the, you know, here's the blueprints for the house. We're going to build 50 of them. When the, bridges, when the bridges were shut down, rioters started branching off into areas that were literally just houses throughout Chicago. And this freaked people out and they got really, really angry. So the closer you get to downtown, the more you'll see like uh, townhomes or like three flats, apartment buildings. And as you slowly branch out, it becomes individual houses, but it's very, very much a big grid. That was one of the biggest fears. Now, outside of actual neighborhoods in Chicago, because I, I have family in Chicago, I was told by several people, friends and family who had not been talking to each other. Yeah, rioters had gone out to the suburbs. There, there were some people freaking out as to why they made it to the far west suburbs. Like I'm talking like 40 miles outside the city. How did that happen? Where I live, helicopters, sirens going crazy. They had to shut the bridges down in Philadelphia. So what are you trying to say? I don't know. Maybe I'm missing an inside joke. Maybe there's something I don't quite understand. But the arrests have been happening. The, 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 it was so you're, you're, you're talking about the concerns over them heading to, to suburbia. OK, well, they ended up doing it anyway. So what is the point? And then here, here's here's the first response. You know, sometimes I think those Fox News folks can be kind of disingenuous and hyperbolic. Do these people not read any of the news? The craziest thing to me is CNN's reported on this. NBC is reported on this. How have we gotten to the point where he's got to be lying, right? K file is trying to be disingenuous to manipulate people ignoring what's really going on, I guess. So what we ended up seeing in Portland is, as I described, militant tactics. Here's what Andy No said. Antifa cars carrying supplies are driving around the area and helping their comrades. They've concealed their license plates by covering them up. And we heard similar things in Seattle from SPD. Officers are investigating several vehicles circling the area of today's operation. Police have observed individuals in their vehicles with firearms and armor. The vehicles also appear to be operating without visible license plates. It's not a protest. It's something else. I don't know what you want to call it. Armed insurrection? Fine. Call it something else. You do not have vehicles with no license plates in the Pacific Northwest driving around resupplying far left extremists while they have armor and weapons and call it a demonstration. At this point, there's no need to argue. Well, actually, when you start throwing explosives at cops, it's not a peaceful demonstration anymore. What? How is that even a statement that someone would make? Apparently, that's that's literally what they're what, what they're saying. You know, they're, they're I don't I don't have to tell you, man, it's no longer a peaceful demonstration. People are going to start defending themselves. And I think it's it's now on the media to call this something different. I mean, a lot of people have called it insurrection, perhaps. I, I, I don't know if we can uh, if we can call this level of conflict civil war, but it is fourth and fifth generational warfare, as I've talked about before. And, and don't quote me. Look, the, I'm, 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 I'm repeating what other other experts in national security have talked about. Right. I pulled up several articles on it in the past. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on, 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 on how these things operate. But what you need to understand about what Antifa is doing is they're purposefully trying to avoid having this be designated some kind of uprising or civil war on purpose. Now, here's the, here, here's, here's the important factor. What, what's going on right now may end. It, it may be crushed. The feds may come in tomorrow. These people might come out and they all, they all, they all might get arrested and brought down to D.C. or some other federal courthouse and uh, imprisoned. And maybe that's the end of it. And if it is, we're not going to act like a civil war ever happened. However, if this escalates to become a nationwide something, you know, conflict crisis hitting every major city, and I'm not talking about how the riots and looting happened because that was bad. I'm talking about how Antifa is driving around with these vehicles with weapons, you know, and they're engaging in these tactics. If that actually ends up hitting, ev hitting every city and it's sustained and we do fall into a discernible something that's, that's very visibly civil war, Everything we're seeing now will be considered part of it. This is where it's where it's very, very tricky. Whenever it comes to the media, 
uh, people are, are reluctant to actually be the first to up the terminology. And I've talked about this years ago. Antifa are terrorists. And the, the word Antifa is a, a general descriptor for an ideology. It's a, it's, it's a tribal symbol they use to identify each other, to support each other because they have the same or similar goals. The only reason there's no visible structure is it's a tactic to prevent the government from shutting them down. So they can talk, they can, they, they'll call each other. They'll provide support for each other. They'll all show up in the same place. But the cells operate semi-independently on purpose to be very difficult to stop. At a certain point, okay, these people are terrorists, right? This is, this is the issue. They're engaging in violence against the public and civilians in order to force an ideology upon this country. And they are gaining ground because people are scared. I have heard so many stories from people in high profile positions, famous people, celebrities, people you would you'd be shocked if I told you some of the people who have contacted me and I tell them you have to say something. I'm not talking about going out, putting on a MAGA hat and waving a Trump flag. I'm saying just coming out and being like, hey, man, I don't stand for this. They won't do it because they're scared of the violence. That's the goal. Antifa is purposefully amorphous so that they can show up to your house and threaten your family and they know the media will never say anything about it. It is death by a thousand cuts. So how do you deal with it? Call it what it is. These people are terrorists, okay? It's a stupid word, admittedly. But what they're doing is not rebellion. It's, they call it a revolution. They'll call it an uprising. They'll say they're the heroes of their own story. But when you beat civilians, when you shoot someone in Provo for just driving their car, when you target innocent people, that's what's make, making you a terrorist. You are threatening regular people and forcing them to get on their knees. And you know what? People are doing it. I don't want to lose my business. That's pathetic. I don't care about your business. And to be honest, I don't care about mine if it came down to risking our freedoms. So many people are so scared of the, of the pile of gold that they've hoarded. They, don't want to, they wouldn't give it up for anything. I tell you what. The dragon sitting atop their pile of gold in their cave, terrified that the adventurers will come and take it away, won't say anything, won't speak up. I would give every ounce of gold, figuratively, for freedom, for, for civility, for rational discourse, for progress. Every ounce of gold hoarded in my cave would freely be given up if it would purchase me freedom, the right to speak up and stand on my own two feet. But too many people say, but I need my gold. And this is one of the most annoying things in the world, to me at least. I remember I had someone tell me uh, they wanted to do what I did back when I was working for Vice Traveling the World. I really want to travel the world just like you, Tim. I want to do everything you're doing. And I said, so go do it. Well, I don't have the money to do it. Okay, well, you have a, an apartment in Brooklyn, which costs you $1,000 a month. Downsize, go sleep on a couch lower the amount you're spending in rent, bring on some roommates, save that money up. And in a month, you'll have extra cash to buy a plane ticket to whatever country you want and start filming. But I like my apartment. Ah, and there it is. Let's, let, let, me, let me make something clear to all of these people who refuse to stand up and say no to this, to call it what it is. I'm not talking about going out and protesting. I'm not talking about, you know, any, anything other than you just saying enough. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's it. Tell the people around you, nah, I'm not okay with this and I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've, you've all gone nuts. Say, what, say whatever you want to say. Just stand up for yourself. Be polite about it. Be calm. But let me just tell you something. What you're really saying to me and everyone else when you refuse to speak up in a way that I might or many others might actually go one step further, what you're really saying is I care less about my rights and my freedom. I care less about the future for my children than I do about my immediate comfort and wealth. That's about it. Because everything I've achieved, everything I've gained, everything I own, I would freely give up if it meant I guaranteed my freedom. Every single thing. You know why? Because I know I'll be okay. Maybe you'll say, it's easy for you to say, Tim, you don't have kids. Yeah, maybe it is. But I can only imagine the level of callousness you must have if you're like, I don't care that my children will have no freedom and will be subjected to this, that they will be th threatened with beatings, that they will be attacked in the street and accused of all the worst things in the world. That's shocking to me. How many people, I, I, I can't tell you how many people I've, I've talked to who said they don't know if they want to have kids anymore because they're scared of the future. And what, what about the people who do have kids? Are you really just going to let all this happen so that you, your, ch your children can inherit your pile of ashes? 
That to me, I just don't understand. So by all means, criticize me for saying that, whatever. It's not going to stop anytime soon. And tomorrow's the 4th of July, and there's supposed to be a bunch of high profile events. We're going to be having FPS and DHS deployed. And there's fears things could spark up, but I guess we'll see. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. And I will see you all then.